In a previous visit to South Africa, I was very lucky to come face to face with some of the world's best fossil specimens of our own early human ancestors. But you don't always need fossils to get to grips with human history, because locked inside every single one of us is a genetic record of our roots, as Mira Senthilingam found out when she met the University of Witwatersrand scientist Himla Sudjul. My area of research is uh, making use of DNA or genetic approaches to reconstruct human history, how DNA as a tool can be used to reconstruct our past. And essentially, there are two genetic markers that are used widely for this purpose. The one we call mitochondrial DNA, and this DNA is passed exclusively through the mother's line. So a mum, when she has kids, will pass it to sons and daughters, but only the daughters, when they reproduce, will pass it on. So using this as a tool, we can reconstruct maternal ancestries exclusively along the mother's, 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 mother's line to some point back in the past. And if we were to examine all people living today, ultimately their branches would connect to a common trunk. And this common trunk we refer to as the most recent common ancestor. Very often people will make reference to it as the mitochondrial Eve. And if we date the time when this connection comes together, it's around 150 to 200,000 years ago. The other interesting thing is that if we ask the question, where in the world would this common point have originated? And the data that we've uh, accumulated and those of others clearly show that the geographic region from whence our species originated was right here in Africa. And how exactly do you follow this lineage? So how do you know where the people came from earlier and earlier and earlier? In trying to reconstruct the past, uh, we take a sample from an individual and we usually use a non-invasive method of a cheek swab because every single cell in the body has the same DNA. We go through chemical processes back in the laboratory to release the DNA. And then we target that DNA with the specific regions that we're interested in studying In the case of mitochondrial DNA, we'll make many, many copies of the region we're interested in and determine its DNA sequence. We then compare that sequence to a published sequence that would be a reference, and depending on where the changes occur, we, from understanding population studies, have been able to draw a tree where the tree shows how the different changes give rise to the branching pattern on the tree. By determining that individual sequence, if I were to use a metaphor of the tree in extended form, I now would identify that person as a leaf. And I would be able to place that leaf on the branch from which it is most closely associated. Once I have the branch, then I can ask a question, are there other leaves on this branch that are similar or maybe identical? And to do this, we make comparisons to databases data that has been published. So I can find a match if one exists in the database that I'm making comparison to. Otherwise, I could find a close match to home in on the geographic region where a similar sequence was seen. Now, the reason we're able to do this is from a priori studies, we have got a reasonably good map of coverage of the globe to look at associations of patterns. And what we find is that the patterns are very strongly correlated with geography. So could it be described as a tree where the trunk, per se, is in Africa and then the branches are branching out and there are different branches on all the different continents then and then leaves then within each continent? Yes, and that's basically what this metaphor tries to expand on, that the root of the tree and the common trunk is pretty much embedded in Africa and then the deeper branches of the tree are still found in Africa And then as the tree tapers towards the periphery, representing a subset of individuals who left Africa to go out of Africa to populate Europe and Asia, that diminishing gene pool is taken out, and then we can see how those branches have subsequently evolved to give the patterns that we see outside of Africa. What do you think can now be done knowing this? And so where would you now take your research next? Well, on the one hand, we contribute to understanding population history 
and our own species origins, which is a question that I would argue is probably a fundamental question that we all have. Secondly, by understanding population structure, we believe we can contribute to understanding disease susceptibility and why certain diseases occur in some people and not in others. So there are many, many diseases where more than one gene comes into play. A classic example would be diabetes or hypertension. So it's not like a single gene giving rise to a, a defect. So these are called multifactorial diseases. And to study those, one needs to understand the population structure. Because the challenge to scientists is, how do you distinguish which spectrum of variation is due just to normal variation versus those which are disease-causing? Himla Sujul using the power of genetics to reveal that we all came out of Africa sometime around about 150,000 years ago.